Yo, 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 this is a follow-up video to a tutorial that I made a few weeks ago where I shared some insights into how I use the app Guitar Pro to learn music for the guitar. This video is in response to a comment that I had asking to explain how to line up real audio with the transcription within the program. So this is going to be like a kind of noob's guide as to how to do it. I'm not going to be utterly comprehensive here. I'm just going to talk about the way that I do it and try and keep it as brief as possible and as simple as possible so that everybody's got the best chance of understanding how to do it for themselves. And once you know how, it's actually not that difficult. If there's anything that you're not sure about here, leave me a comment and I'll help out where I can. So here we are in Guitar Pro and I've chosen to use the song Rise Up by Testament as this is a track that I am starting to learn myself. So in order to start the process we need to click here on view and then go to show audio track. Once we do this you will see that this kind of grid or it will be a grid appears at the bottom and we can either drag our audio file in or click to browse and then find the audio file on your computer which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to click here, I'm going to go to desktop so I know where this is here and it's here and then I'm going to click on my mp3 and then it's going to appear in the grid at the bottom there. Now if you're not familiar with what this is, a waveform is a visual representation of a sound. You will notice that the waveform has peaks where the volume is louder. So the bigger the waveform, the louder the volume, the smaller the waveform, the quieter the volume. Now this is important because musicians tend to accent beats as they play. There's going to be a little bit more about this in a couple of minutes time. Another thing that I'm going to do before I start is mute all of the MIDI sounds that are um, kind of embedded in this file. Um, if we were to just listen to this with just the MIDI sounds, it would sound like this. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with that, it's just not very, I don't know, it's not very immersive. You can do loads of things there, you can kind of mute or, or solo specific instruments to make it more easy uh, for you to kind of hear what's going on um, in individual tracks, but it, overall it just, it just doesn't feel very good playing along with the MIDI, because it just sounds a bit like, like I said in my last video, Mario music. So I'm going to go ahead and just mute all of those those MIDI tracks now. Just a little side note before we start lining the audio up with the, the, the transcription here. You need to make sure that the transcription is accurate before you attempt to do this because it's really annoying to line the two up and then be kind of frustrated as to why it's not working um, and then realize that actually the transcription is wrong. So what I tend to do is have a kind of listen to the MIDI file, uh, listen to the original track and see if the two things sound similar if not the same. Some of the time they're very accurate, a lot of the time they're almost accurate and some of the time they're absolutely terribly wrong. Um, and as always, you shouldn't believe everything that you read on the internet. I often find that I have to make adjustments to the transcription as I go in order to increase that level of accuracy. I'm not saying, however, that I get to the point where the transcription's perfect um, because, well, I'm not really good enough for that. Um, but I get to the point normally where the transcription, if it wasn't really good before, is a lot better than it was. I am confident that the transcription for this song is pretty good though, so I'm going to plow ahead now and show you how to line the uh, the sheet music up with, uh, with the audio. Just another point about the grid, you'll notice here that the grid is separated into sections. These sections are bars, so that's bar 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc, etc. And the bars are separated themselves by these dashed lines and that's where the beat falls. So here we have beat 1, beat 2 three and then four and then the start of the next bar. Obviously if a bar had more than four beats in it you'd have more than four dashed lines. Okay so I've muted all of the MIDI instruments I'm left with just the audio track and I'm also going to have the click running in the background as well because that's how I'm going to tell whether the two things are in time with one another or not. 
just going to interrupt myself here just for a second. Please, please, please don't forget to subscribe to the 60 Seconds of Shred YouTube channel. And if you've got any questions, leave me a comment and I'll help out where I can. So the click is like a set point in time and it's that that the transcription is ultimately lined up to and now it's a matter of making the audio line up with the click and then subsequently with the transcription. The first thing that you're going to notice is that if I press play, the transcription here and the audio can't be in line with one another because the first waveform of the audio doesn't start until after the start of bar number two. Check it out. So that can't be right. We need the two things to start at the same time. Now what I'm gonna do here is drag the bars in time with the waveform. So I'm gonna click on the grid here, I'm gonna press control on my keyboard, and then I'm gonna pull everything back until it's lined up with beat one. All right, let's give that a listen. As you can hear, the two things just, they're still not in sync with one another. And I mean, if you just have a little look at the, the sheet music there as it scrolls, it's just not quite in time in the way that we want it to be. So there's something else that's not quite right. And I'm pretty confident here that the thing that's not right is the tempo. So that that's the speed of the beat, given to us here using the tempo marker that says it's 195 beats a minute. Now that's just, not right at this point. So we need to do something to change it so that the beat is the same in the transcription as it is in the audio file. Now there's a couple of ways we could do this. We could work out the tempo separately from the program using a metronome or something. But the faster way is to use the grid down here. Now, like I said before, these peaks in the waveform are where the musicians are accenting the beat. Now, without going into too much detail, the most obvious beat to look at is beat number one. So we need to work out which one of these subsequent peaks is the peak that lines up with the start of bar number two. In fact, we're not going to use bar number two because there isn't much going on in bar number two. We're going to use bar number three. So we need to work out which one of these peaks is bar number three. So I'm just going to drag this little thing across here so I'm now just going to press here on um, this number three until I get the, the, that kind of sideways arrow thing. And I can drag the beat either slower or faster overall. So you can see here that as I go this way towards the left, the tempo gets faster. And as I go towards the right, the tempo gets slower. So that's because the gaps between the beats as you go left are getting smaller. And as you go right, they're getting bigger. You can see this happening visually. So I need to drag this so that it's in time with whatever I think the first beat in that third bar is. So I'm just going to kind of experiment, really. I'm going to listen to the track. And I just happened to have got it right. It was that that uh, peak there, which was the start of beat three. I don't think it's quite perfect though. Let's just have a little listen again. So the click's almost in time now, but just not quite. So to make a little micro adjustment, I'm gonna zoom in on the waveform using this plus um, uh, button here. And you can see there that if that's the peak, the beat's actually slightly kind of ahead of that. So I'm just going to drag it across a little bit. So you need to be a roughly there. Musicians tr tend to play slightly behind the beat. So we don't want our, our um, bar to start in the middle of the peak like that. Just before it would be absolutely fine. Okay, let's have a listen now. Okay, so I've just noticed something there. On bar, the start of bar eight, we started to go slightly out of time again. Now, there could be a few different reasons for that, um, but I think 
possibly, and I only say possibly, perhaps they recorded the intro to this without a click. So they didn't record along with a metronome. So the tempo is changing slightly over time. But then when we get to this point, they did start recording to a click. So what we need to do is drag the rest of it in time with that point. So I'm just going to grab bar 8 and I'm going to move it slightly this way. So that's now put a little tempo change in. It's just changed the tempo slightly subsequently for all of the other bars. And now, hopefully, it should be in time. At this point, though, we just need to make a little distinction about two different things. Thing number one, this is dead easy to do with music that was recorded to a metronome in the studio. Most modern music, so for the last 15, 20 years, was recorded to a click. And the reason for that, well, let's not go into too much detail, but it's when we started to digitise the music production um, process more heavily. It's far easier to edit music that was recorded in time to a click, for reasons which I won't go into right now because I don't want to bore your socks off. This whole process that we're going through now is a lot harder for the second approach to recording music, which was... In the past, music wasn't recorded to a metronome. So tempos tended to change over time, depending on where you were in the song or even where you are within the same section of a song. And therefore the speed of the beat is a little more fluid. I'll talk about this in a little more detail and go through a little example of how you line up the audio with the sheet music that wasn't recorded to a click in a few minutes time. Okay, so now let's just take a quick listen to that. to just drift slightly there later on so I'm just going to just just drag across again from there so every time I do this it will change the tempo for all of the subsequent bars but it won't change anything from earlier on and then I'd simply just continue listening to the song and just making those micro adjustments as I went because I'm confident that this song was recorded to a click we actually don't really need to make that many adjustments overall. I've actually had songs before where I've got the first bar right, I've lined the audio up with the click in the first bar, I've made sure that the tempo was right when it got to the second bar, and then the entire rest of the song has been utterly in time. Uh, for instance, I did um, the song Marigold by Periphery, and once I'd got the first bar in time, the transcription was dead accurate, and uh, it was obviously recorded to a click. There were no tempo changes that I can remember. Uh, and that was it, it was just done. It took about three minutes. But not all songs are as straightforward as that. All right, so we're gonna call that kind of done for this track. Um, and I'm gonna move on to one that's slightly harder because it wasn't recorded to a click. So here's the song Supersonic by Oasis. Now I've already gone ahead and added the audio track underneath. Let's just have a little listen to what it sounds like. So you can hear there that the click is nowhere near in time with uh, with what the drummer's playing. So I'm going to drag, and you can see straight away that the, the first beat doesn't line up with the first beat of the bar here. So I'm going to drag everything across so that it does. Now this is relatively easy to see uh, because we've just got the drummer playing and obviously they are, he is heavily emphasising where the beat is. So our waveforms are really easy to pick out. Now I think we can see straight away there's a bit of a problem here. One, two, three and potentially beat four. So this is probably beat one of bar two, but it's completely out of time. So let's just have a little, little lesson. Oops, let's just go from the beginning. Okay, so that's closer, at least it starts in the right place, but this second big bar is definitely not right. So I'm just gonna grab it and I'm just gonna drag it across. Okay, so that's looking a little bit more like it, but straight away, look how these subsequent beats don't seem to line up with the grid. Now, this is this thing I was talking about before. This wasn't recorded to a metronome, so the sense of 
pulse, the sense of tempo for the musicians when they were recording it changed over time. Let's just have a listen to the first bar though and just see if it works. Okay, so that's sounding much more together, but I can, without even listening to this second bar, I can tell that the, it's not going to line up with the beat. So what I need to do is adjust the tempo in that bar. So I'm going to grab bar three, and this will change where the beat is in bar two. And can you see there that the grid's starting to move? So I'm going to line that up perfectly with the beat there. Okay, so now let's listen to it from the beginning and see if the first and second bars are now in time. hear that the third bar is now not in time so we simply need to repeat the process we're just going to drag the fourth uh, marker back a little bit and you can see how the grid lines now line up beautifully with the waveforms now let's just listen from bar two and again you can hear that bar four is now slightly out of time so I'm going to drag the marker for bar five across so that it's into so the two things line up again you can actually hear there that when the guitar enters the tempo doesn't seem to change as much um, at least not to start with. I can see here that by the time you get to bar 9, uh, it's starting to drift out. But here in bar 7, you might want to make a little mic. And you'll often find that if a drummer's sense of tempo is really good, they might shift a little over time, but there'll be whole chunks that are absolutely spot on timing-wise in terms of the relationship between what they're playing and the beat. And then when they change from one section to another, they might speed up a little bit or even slow down slightly. And you'll have to adjust those sections in order to kind of fit the, the tempo that the transcription is, is playing at. This can be quite a laborious process because we're going to have to make these micro adjustments throughout the entire song, but believe me, it's worth it. Maybe at some point in the future, AI will do this for us because at the end of the day, it is pretty obvious where the beat lands and it'd just be up to the programming to decide which peak in the waveform is in which beat of the bar. But we're not quite there with the technology yet, I don't think very very quickly when we make these adjustments we're actually automating tempo changes within the transcription and you can see this at the top here where it started on roughly 100 beats a minute and then in the second bar it dropped by two beats a minute to 98 roughly and then it went up again into the third bar um, to 100 beats a minute and so on and so forth but these tempo changes are not notated in the transcription uh, because if they were, it would look really horrible. You, you can actually have the tempo changes there, but I don't recommend it because it, it just looks a little bit confusing to the eye. Let's just have a quick listen to this from the beginning, just for the first few bars and just see what it sounds like overall. point it starts to drift out of time there are actually a couple of little bars there that weren't quite spot on and I'd go back through and just make little micro adjustments so that they are but you get the picture I think my predictions for this software in the future are that it's just going to become easier to use and I think like I said before the biggest impact that AI could make would be to actually do this process of lining the sheet music up with the audio for you and I don't really see any reason why that can't happen. The other thing that I think is going to happen with this software is eventually we will have the ability to select specific instruments out of the recording and solo those instruments. Now I know that this technology already exists and it would be really, really cool for the program to be intelligent enough to kind of 
pick out what guitar one's playing and you'd be able to just solo that instrument. Pick out what the drums are playing and just solo that part of, of the recording. Um, I think this is probably going to be one of the features that's included in Guitar Pro either 9 or 10. Right guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Please don't forget to subscribe to the 60 Seconds of Shred YouTube channel and I'll see you later.